linear functions are great because they give you so much information in just a few numbers. So in the context of this story, Megan is going on a family vacation to Disneyland or Disney World. Um, and it says that uh, the trip is 685 miles and they will be traveling 65 miles per hour on average. And Megan used the following equation to calculate the remaining distance throughout the trip. D equals 685 minus 65H. And then they gave you a graph to model that. I kind of gave a lazy version of it. But so what does this mean? So we first want to start out by knowing she starts here. In the context of this equation, we could rewrite this in slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b, where our slope become, comes before our y intercept. So, but we do know that any value without the variable in it, on it, this is my y intercept, 685. Well, what does that mean? Well, 685 as, an inter as any intercept is an ordered pair. So if I need my y intercept, it always involves an ordered pair of x and y values. And in order to be able to get on this line, one of these has to be a zero. Well, in order to get on that line, I can't have a run value. So that means my x has to be zero. And if x is zero, what does the y course, what's the corresponding y? It is 685. So at zero and 685, I'm up here. And what does that mean in the context of the story? Well, it shows me my x axis is related to number of hours. So x is time or hours. And we even have a clue to that because in our equation, the x value is an h, hours. And the d is distance, so the y value is distance. So when x is zero and is related to time, this means at the beginning. So at the beginning of Megan's journey, they have 685 miles to go, okay? So this would be the explanation. Um, so they, uh, the trip begins with 685 miles to travel. Okay, so that lets me understand my starting point. Then I'm also needing to know, well, my line eventually goes down and hits here. What does this mean? This is our x-axis, or sorry, our x-intercept, where the line hits my x-axis. And similar to the y-intercept, I have to have a zero value in my ordered pair in order to get on that line. The only way I can get on that line is if I don't have a rise. So that means my zero is in the y portion and that lets me figure out, well, what's my x value corresponding to that? And based on the graph that it showed, it was 10 and a half. So 10.5 for x and my y was zero. Well, what's that mean in the context of Megan's vacation? What does it mean if I have zero for distance? and 10.5 for time. It means Megan reaches her destination in 10 and a half hours. So Megan reaches her destination in 10.5 hours. Now it's really important when you're explaining what does the intercept mean that you're accounting for both of those values. You can't just say she has, uh, she's going to go 685 miles. She starts with 685 miles to go. The trip ends at 10 and a half hours. So you've got to account for both of them. The other thing we need to look at is slope. And slope is always the number attached to the variable inside the equation, attached to your x value. So in this context, it was negative 65. Well, what does that mean? So your slope is, so slope is negative 65. And that's important that you make sure it's a negative because if you look at your line, it's going down. So there is a decreasing value. And what's decreasing? Distance remaining. So in the terms of the slope, what does it mean? It means the distance remaining 
decreases by 65 miles. Now, I don't want to end there because it does decrease by 65 miles, but it does it only happen once? No, it happens and is repeated every hour. So, uh, 65 miles every hour. So you want to include that because otherwise you're only accounting for half of the slope. The slope is the rise over the run, the change in my y value over the change in my x value. So when I explain it, I have to account for what is happening in both of those contexts. So as she drives, the distance remaining decreases by 65 miles until they reach their destination. Um, and yeah, you definitely don't want to show that it's, you know, that, oh, they're driving 65. It's, it's based on the context of what is going on here. Um, so that meets all of the parameters. And then as far as identifying the independent and dependent variable, what does the controlling? What then is the result? Does the time that's passed control the distance that's remaining? Or does the distance that's remaining control how much time is passing? Well, time, because you're driving, is always controlling then the, the y value. So your x value is always your independent, it's in charge, and then y's value is the result of whatever that input is. So independent is number of hours, dependent is distance remaining. So the other thing is looking at the domain and range of the story. So the domain is accounting for all of the possible x values that occurred or were you know, involved in the equation. So as far as Megan's Disney vacation, the lowest x value was zero, no time having passed. The greatest x value was 10 and a half hours. And so x fell somewhere in between those two values, and we use the inequalities to show that. Zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to ten and a half. So this says just x fell in between these two range of values and could be anything in between. Y then is all of the possible y values that this line went through. And if our, our lowest, lowest distance was zero, meaning we reached our destination. The greatest that we had to go was 685. So y's value fell in between. Generally, we want the lowest first and our highest after that so that we keep our inequalities going in the same direction. We're less li likely to mess them up or get confused. So with that being my potential range of x value inputs, these are my potential outputs or range of um, miles or distance remaining. And this is just the fancy set notation for showing the range of values for domain and range.